Chapter 45, A Common Sense Revolution to Restore Our Environment Our lovely planet now staggers under massive human impact and fast-rising populations that, if unchecked, can only lead to catastrophe. Some people remain optimistic that technology in one form or another will alleviate the damage we have done and enable us to continue on our present course. Others are deeply pessimistic that anything can save us, and it's easy to see why, given the increasingly alarming reports on the rate at which our climate is changing. Because we're accelerating toward catastrophe, minor improvements that only slow the rate of acceleration are ultimately meaningless. Slowing down won't prevent you driving your car over a cliff, only delay the time of the crash. You have to change direction altogether. That's what we must now do to avoid a future none of us wants, and it will require nothing short of a revolution in four areas. Firstly, a revolution in management. Successfully manage what is complex, people, organizations, natural resources and natural systems by managing holistically. Secondly, a revolution in agriculture. Decarbonize the atmosphere, reverse desertification and provide food for life by regenerating soils through sound cropping practices and properly managed livestock. Thirdly, a revolution in policy making. Create policies that are ecologically, economically and socially sound by developing policies holistically. And fourthly, a revolution within our organizations and institutions. Overcome institutional inertia and opposition to holistic management by creating awareness and shifting public opinion. Some notes then on revolutionizing management. Addressing the complexity inherent in anything we manage is our greatest challenge and one we have to meet if we are to regenerate the world's soil so that we reverse desertification, address climate change and successfully feed 9 billion or more people. The holistic management framework gives us a way to do this in all forms of organization. Almost all of the problems overwhelming us now are, Alan believes, a consequence of reductionist management, where the context is reduced to a need, a desire or a problem, when we, in fact, live in a holistic world and must manage within a holistic context. The problems that continue to worsen are not the complicated ones technology adeptly addresses, they are the complex social and biological problems that management can resolve as long as that management is holistic. Yet many scientists and indeed most of society still seek salvation in technology. Such misplaced confidence is based largely on our inability to recognize the difference between what is complicated and what is complex and why that difference matters. As Chapter 3 explained, all that we make using technology is complicated but predictable in that it does what we design it to do. All that we manage involves people, organizations and nature and they are complex in that they are self-organizing and thus unpredictable. The success of our technological achievements in addressing complicated problems has blinded us to the fact that technology is of little use in resolving problems that are complex. Although technological solutions may enjoy short-term success, the likelihood of their producing unintended consequences is too high a risk to take. Some still seek to solve the climate crisis by using technology to geoengineer solutions almost certain to spawn dangerous effects. So we haven't learned our lesson yet. To resolve such mega problems as desertification and climate change, we have to tackle their underlying cause, which Alan has tried to show convincingly in this book because it is tied to our failure to manage what is complex. Livestock and fossil fuels, which are merely resources to us, do not cause desertification and climate change. We do in our management of them. It's our management of livestock that determines whether they damage land and pollute the atmosphere or whether they restore damaged land to health and decarbonize the atmosphere. It's how we manage fossil resources that determines whether they are burned up as fuel and pollute the atmosphere or used sparingly for centuries in the manufacture of essential products. Reductionist management has given us the former. Holistic management promises the latter. 
the revolution in management is the first that needs to occur as it is the catalyst for the other three. While we have all the money and manpower in the world to bring it about, the one luxury we do not have is time.